Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, there are many people who have to speak, so I will be as uh, brief as possible. And I also want to be uh, precise about what I say. So um, you'll forgive me if I mostly read from my text. Um, Mrs. Indira Gandhi once derided journalists during her emergency rule, saying they put their mistakes on the front page. That was and is true every now and then. But the more important point was she did not want the press to put her mistakes on the front page. Um, it's different today because there is no censorship. But the objective is similar, to harass, intimidate, and thereby inhibit the media. Um, there are two versions about how one particular individual died on Republic Day. Even today, I find that opinion is divided. Um, and it is true that in the course of our work and under the pressure of deadlines or the urgency of the moment, we can and will make mistakes. That is only human. Some gave the second police version uh, almost immediately, backed as it was by foot, uh, video footage. Um, others prefer to go by what the dead person's family is saying. We can and should debate the rights and wrongs of our reportage. But the question is, is any of this sedition? All of us know what is going on. The effort is to prevent the media from doing its job. There is no other credible explanation for recording FIRs in multiple states against the same set of people with similar charges that include conspiracy, abetment to violence, creating communal harmony, and of course, sedition. There is a larger purpose at work when this happens. That is why this must be fought, by raising our collective voice, by representing to those in power to recognize the absurdity of what has been recorded at police stations, and by challenging police action in courts. I hope the courts will not say that the process of investigation should be allowed to continue, because as happens so often in our country, the process is itself the punishment. And that may well be the intention. Is there a pattern? I don't want to go into um, a long history of cases. Um, Anand has uh, mentioned some of them. But very recently, just a few days ago, uh, the Union Home Secretary wrote to the Chief Secretaries of all states, asking them to invoke the Indian Penal Code against media that spread, quote, unfounded and misleading rumors, unquote, about COVID vaccines. The provocation for such a letter was unclear since vaccination has been proceeding more smoothly and in larger numbers in India than in most other countries. The Home Secretary also said that the concerned authorities had certified the vaccines. But the whole point of free expression is that one has a right to question what the authorities say. As it happens, it is virologists and other medical specialists who ask the questions. It is Germany that has made comments about the efficacy of one of the vaccines certified in India. Will the IPC be invoked against them too, or only against journalists? Finally, we have to face the question, what kind of journalism must we practice in times like these? And I can't do better than quote Lionel Barber, who was until, I think last year, the editor of the Financial Times who has the following to say, and I quote, the internet not only destroyed traditional claims of pure journalistic objectivity, it eroded the notion of, quote, the trusted source, unquote, whether it be the respected TV anchor or, again, quote, unquote, the newspaper of record. The internet also lifted barriers to distribution and entry leading to an explosion of news and views, 
everything accelerated with the internet rewarding speed and controversy. In the middle of this revolution, it was tempting to scrap journalistic traditions and practice, demanding multiple sources and striving for fairness and balance seemed quaint to many when watching the growing influence of unrestrained forms of expression such as blogs. But I remained faithful to the proposition and still do today. Many of the old rules should apply to new media even if the journalistic form has changed and the surrounding political debate has become infinitely more intense." End quote. When we are under attack, the position that Barber spells out for the way we must do our job has compelling logic. Thank you.